Hello, and welcome to Tony's Bonsai. Over the last 12 months, we've had lots of bonsai challenges. They're great fun. And today, I want to put one out there and challenge all the bonsai creators to have a go at this. And it's basically to start off some interesting literati style bonsai using whatever material you can get your hands on. Hello and welcome to the Bonsai Garden. And you will have seen from the intro that Tony of Tony's Bonsai has thrown out a challenge to YouTube bonsai creators like myself to have a go at creating a literati style bonsai tree. Literati is something of a difficult style to master. They can either be sort of straight trunked with few branches or as this one they can be a bit twisted and contorted. But the idea is that the majority of branches are in probably the upper half or third of the tree and they're quite sparse and represent trees that have struggled in nature against adversity and prevailed. So let's have a look. Before we can tackle the challenge we need to understand what exactly is literati and how does it differ from other styles of bonsai. Literati bonsai refers to a Japanese bonsai style where the tree is trained to have an elegant and slender trunk with branches resembling calligraphy strokes. The literati style bonsai is known for its asymmetrical and irregular shape, often featuring a gnarled wood, twists and bends to convey a sense of age and wisdom, and struggling against adverse conditions to cling to life. The literati bonsai typically has sparse foliage that is placed on a few branches only, giving it an overall light and airy appearance. The style of the literati bonsai reflects a tree which has struggled and yet triumphed against harsh conditions and adversity, as well as the refined taste and intellectual pursuits of the literati or educated elite in ancient Chinese and Japanese society. The prime characteristics of literati bonsai include a slender trunk. The trunk of the literati bonsai should be slender and tall with a gradual taper towards the top. The entire tree should be in proportion with the height of the tree being balanced by the width of the pot. Branches. The branches of a literati bonsai should be sparse, mimicking the natural growth of trees in harsh environments. The branches should be carefully arranged to create a balanced silhouette. Foliage. The foliage of the literati bonsai should be minimal emphasizing the tree's slender trunk and branches. The leaves should be small and delicate, with a number of leaves being proportional to the size of the branches. Movement. The movement of a literati bonsai should be flowing and graceful, conveying a sense of energy and motion. The tree's branches should be arranged to create a sense of movement and delicate curves and gentle twists. It should almost be like calligraphy. Pot. The pot used for a literati bonsai should be chosen to complement the shape and style of the tree. The pot should be shallow with a wide opening that balances the, the height of the tree. The colour and texture of the pot should also match the aesthetic of the tree. The accepted wisdom is that both juniper and pine trees probably make for the most convincing literati trees. Those are the trees that after all grow in the harshest conditions in mountains. However, I've got a number of trees in my collection that sort of lend themselves to the literati type form, including this hawthorn tree, which I have here. You can see it's got quite a long slender trunk. This is my Buddhist pine podocarpus which I bought from the Japanese garden at Morgan in Cornwall. And there's another tree that lends itself to the literati style. And I believe that's probably what the uh, developer was going for when they designed this tree. You can see the long thin trunk. Most of the branches are from about halfway up. It could possibly lose this lower branch to make it a little bit more convincing. And the branches are all positioned in a sort of drooping manner around the tree. And perhaps that could be enhanced slightly to improve the look of the tree. The example I have here is a Scots pine. And it's a tree which I bought from the Doncaster show. And it's currently in a beautiful Donna George pot. 
And you can clearly see that it has quite sparse foliage. It's actually quite a young tree. But also, if you were to lay this out as a straight trunk, the foliage is all happening in the upper portion of the tree. It's got some quite tight bends in there to suggest that it's had quite a harsh life. The tree has quite a twisty, sinuous trunk. I believe that larches are also another tree species which could make for a convincing literati form because they're quite flexible. And this is an example with quite a thin trunk. And again, it's starting to develop ramification nicely. And perhaps that's one that could be developed into a literati tree. This is my Fuji Cherry windswept star and I've always considered this to be a literati star tree. You can see it has the typical literati thin trunk on there with sparse branching up ahead and it's got a lovely twisty trunk in there to suggest that it's had a difficult life and again that's a deciduous tree which has been styled in a literati style. Bonsai design is a combination of visual mass and areas of negative space. A successfully designed bonsai will feel balanced and stable. Literati is such a difficult style to achieve well because the trees have such long slender trunks and only a minimum of branching and foliage to work with and can feel unbalanced if not done carefully. Consider a simple example of an upright tree. The visual mass of the tree is centered over the pot and the composition feels stable. If instead the tree was slanted to one side, it would feel unstable and invoke a sense of anxiety in the viewer. If the tree were styled so the trunk curved back over itself, the sense of balance would be restored. Similarly, if the branches were styled to counterbalance the slant of the tree, then the sense of equilibrium would be achieved. Of course, such design decisions are often made unconsciously and intuitively based on what feels right, rather than due to any in-depth analysis. There are two different approaches to bonsai. One is to take a tree and to see what shape and design that tree suggests to you. The other is to have a design in mind and to select a tree that suits that particular design. And that's the aim here. So I'm looking around the local garden centre for something that I believe will be suited to a literati styling. This is interesting, it's a Pinus parviflora nagishi, which is in a columnar growing style and it's clearly quite a vigorous tree and I wonder if that might lend itself nicely to styling as a literati. So here is the tree I'm going to style, it's a Japanese five needle pine. You can see from the candles growing at the top that the tree is very vigorous. One of the things that I will need to do with this tree is thin out some of this growth and obviously part of the design of a literati tree is that it's quite sparse in terms of foliage. What I'm likely to do is remove the bottom branch here altogether and then thin out the branches part way up and give them a downward movement and what will happen over time is that these candles will extend out to become branches and will become part of the design. At the top of the tree here I'll need to just thin that out and select some of this foliage to sort of sweep downwards. Here is an image from the Literati book which is the sort of thing which I'm aiming for with this tree. Now bear in mind this is only the beginning of the project and so I'm just really setting this tree up for that style. It won't by any means be a completed tree by the end of this process. Because one of the key features of a literati bonsai is that they have very sparse foliage and branches tend to be in the upper perhaps third or half of the tree. I'm removing this branch here. My front is likely to be in here somewhere and I'm also going to need to remove some of the branches in here. 
in terms of developing the tree and developing the, the taper it might be better to remove the thicker branches and keep the smaller branches which will emphasize the trunk more so i'm actually coming in here now and i'm going to remove And so what I'm going to end up with is a tree which only has two or three branches that are wired into a downward position. Lose quite a lot of this foliage in the apex and select a new leader out of that. Because the trunk is quite thick at the moment it's not quite as flexible I mean there is there is some flex in there but not a lot it's a bit more flexible towards the top but using the branch splitter will help me with that task the raffia will just serve to hold the trunk together where I split it and protect the bark whilst I apply the wire it will also aid the tree in healing so I'm going to take my trunk or branch splitter and run a channel up the tree here and then another one at 90 degrees to that and what I'm aiming to do is to make the trunk more flexible You can see now that the tree will rotate and move much easier. But what I do need to do before I do anything else with it is get some raffia on that trunk. And you can see that raffia now is serving the purpose of just holding the trunk together. And also when I apply my wire, that will protect the trunk and also stop it from splitting or snapping. This is my tree after applying my first coil of wire. I'll see how I get on with bending it. So I'm bending the tree and also trying to twist and turn the tree at the same time. And I'm not necessarily looking for crazy bends in there, just a little bit of sinuous movement. And I'm turning in the direction or twisting in the direction that the wire is coiled on the tree. And that will do two things. It will tighten the coils and stop that wire from coming loose but also it will bind and pull tighter on both the raffia and also the split in the trunk and in the top of the tree here I just want to bend the tree this way slightly whilst at the same time also bringing up my new leader towards the top of the tree the next thing I need to do now is just apply some wire to these branches So here we go then, here's my effort in starting a literati in a columnar form and it's by no means a complete and finished tree at this stage it's just the beginnings of the tree and we've got the long thin tapering trunk we've got sparse branches which are 
growing and sweeping down. Actually, I've been looking at this tree and rotating it around and thinking that perhaps it might make a better tree if this was the apex at this point and losing that top part of the tree. Coming in and snipping off this upper portion of wire and then a fairly hefty cut coming in at that point. And that's the top of the tree gone. And I just raise this little bit up to be the new leader. Choosing the right pot for a literati bonsai tree is an important aspect of its design as it can affect the overall aesthetic of the tree. Here are some considerations when choosing a pot for a literati bonsai. Size. The size of the pot should be in proportion to the size of the tree. A literati bonsai typically has a slender trunk and sparse foliage, so a small and shallow pot will work best. Shape. The shape of the pot should complement the asymmetrical and irregular shape of the bonsai tree. A round or oval pot is often the best choice with a gently curved lip that complements the curves of the tree. Colour. The colour of the pot should be chosen to enhance the natural beauty of the bonsai tree. A simple neutral colour like black, brown or white can work well, but a brightly coloured or patterned pot may also look good depending on the style of the tree though will more often detract from the tree and draw attention to the pot. Material. The material of the pot can also have an effect on the overall aesthetic of the literati bonsai. Ceramic or clay pots are traditional materials that can give tree a natural and organic look, whilst a wooden or resin pot can give a more modern feel. Drainage. Whatever pot you choose, it must have adequate drainage to allow for water to flow through the soil and out of the bottom of the pot. Without good drainage, the tree will suffer from root rot and other diseases. Nanban pots are particularly popular for literati bonsai trees. They're typically a very shallow, round, very rustic looking bonsai pot, which helps to emphasise the trunk and the curves of the tree. If, like me, you're a complete book nerd and you'd like some additional reading or information on the literati style, then I can highly recommend this book by Zhao Quinquang. It's part of a series of books by the same author on various aspects of bonsai and penjing, and I can highly recommend them. The book has got some great examples of penjing and some really spectacular full-scale images. Goes through the various tools and techniques used for general bonsai. And then the back of the book contains several examples where the author has taken nursery trees or young trees and styled them through a number of years to become fairly spectacular literati style trees it's really probably the best written resource on the subject certainly that i've come across the book is available on amazon fairly readily and it's literati style penjing chinese bonsai masterworks by zhao quinquan i hope you found that useful or interesting if so please hit the like button show your appreciation and you might want to consider hitting the subscribe button to be notified of future videos. Thanks for watching and hope to see you in the next one.